Okay, so let's begin by uh, developing uh, our XMPP uh, service uh, using Vopal. So uh, we will start by logging into uh, our XMPP uh, server console. And as you can see here, I'm using OpenFire, so I'm going to log in. And the first thing we're going to do is this. We're going to set up uh, our external component. So for XMPP, for OpenFire, go to server setting and click on external component. So as you can see here, I've got a few external components set up or three external components set up. And I'm going to set up my fourth one. So I'm going to create a subdomain called customer. And the secret will be always right. So and click on add component. So this will add a new component, uh, subdomain plus shared secret. So the shared secret is basically the password that my component will present when when it tries to connect uh, to um, uh, to to open fire. So once I've done that, uh, I will now go to NetBeans. And once you have installed, uh, you have to install the Vopal uh, NetBeans plugin for you to do this part. So I'm going to go and create a new project. So to create an um, XMPP uh, application, you need to create a web application. Okay, I'm going to give it a name. Let's call it Customer Query. Okay, click on Next. And I've also got um, I've also got uh, Jabberwocky installed on this particular. Glassfish server. Uh, it's going to be a Java EE6 web. Uh, we are not actually using uh, any. We are not using actually using any web technology like servlets or JSP. We are just using the packaging. That is the wall packaging for our application. And what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to use uh, C CDI context dependency injection. We can leave the context path as it is. So now this is the important step. When it comes to framework, uh, I will use select Jabberwocky. And so there are three different types of ways that you can develop uh, application. Uh, component and abstract components are supported by Tinder. Jabberwocky framework or Vopal is is something that is uh, it's a it's an open source pro uh, framework. So I'm going to use this framework, uh, Jabberwocky framework, and click on finish. So what happens now is uh, um, NetBeans will go ahead and create a project. A project now, so, um, so what you what so what you see now it's the configuration file for our, uh, for our web, uh, sorry for our component. Uh, this this configuration file xep zero one one, uh, for one one four dot xml, is is like a web xml. Basically, it allows you to configure uh, your application connection configuration. So the first thing we need to do is specify the subdomain. So if you remember, this is the subdomain that we're going to use customer. So let's use customer, okay. And the next thing that we want to do is we want to enter the shared secret, which is always right here, always right, okay. So one of the things here is if you notice is create subdomain. But what this means is uh, you create the subdomain in Glassfish, not on your XMPP server. As um, for for Jabberwocky, what Jabberwocky does is Jabberwocky keeps uh, keeps track of all the uh, all the subdomain and, and shared secret pair uh, within it, its configuration. Uh, so in most cases, you have to actually pre-create this. But uh, uh, using NetBeans, what we allow you to do is you can uh, we can create the sub uh, we can install the this configuration in Glassfish as we are deploying the application. So that's done. We save the configuration. So basically, what this does is this this creates a XML file uh, like like this. Okay, so I'm going to set close it now. So the first thing I'm going to do is this: I'm going to actually uh, generate the JPA objects uh, for my database. So I've got a standard uh, Derby database that comes with NetBeans. So if you can see, there's a customer database here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is this: I'm going to click on here, and I'm going to say a new entity classes from database, and I'm going to select my my uh, my date my database and my customer table okay so I'm gonna go to next uh, so there are two I'm gonna enter the uh, my package com me XMPP model okay so the other thing that uh, that we I want you to know 
uh, notice is that we are going to generate JAXB annotations because if you remember, uh, we are going to pass the customer information back as XML and JAXB is very uh, 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 it's a handy tool uh, to do that and also uh, Vorpal directly supports uh, JAXB so I'm going to click on finish and what happens is NetBeans will now generate uh, the corresponding uh, JPA classes for my uh, for that particular table. So as you can see, two two objects are being uh, two classes are created, and I will just show just show you this cust particular customer table. So what I'm going to do is this: I'm going to generate a two string two string, and I want to include customer ID, uh, name city phone number email credit rating okay so i'm going to get two string so basically what i'm going to do is this two string will be returned as part of the message body so once i've got that i can ignore discount code because we're not going to uh, look at discount code so the second thing that i'm going to do now is this i'm going to create uh, a class to handle the incoming uh, xmpp message so create a java class okay let's call this customer query handler and the package is going to become acme xmpp okay so this is a java class so the first thing i would want to do is this i want it to be managed by cdi so at request scope okay so the second thing is i'm going to annotate this class with message annotation so basically, the message annotation is a Vopal annotation that says that that tells Vopal that this class is used to handle uh, incoming XMPP message. And the third thing I want to do is this: I want to use a two annotation. Okay, it, the two annotation, and says this query at. So what this says is that. This the, the two annotations says that any message coming in that is addressed to to the JID query at some domain. The, uh, this underscore underscore domain underscore underscore it's basically a macro for for my for my domain. So so basically what this is saying is this for any messages that is addressed to query, this customer query handler will handle it. So once we've done that, the next thing we want to do is this. We want to inject a persistence context or entity manager into this class. So we go persistence context entity manager. Okay. Shift I, fix the import. Okay. Now we're going to create a method to actually handle um, the, 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 uh, the message. So let me just create a method public list of object okay handle query string ID with that's the customer ID okay so the first thing I want to do now is this I want to use the annotation called body okay which is a vopal annotation and what I'm gonna do is this I'm gonna say I'm gonna put the parameter here called body so basically what annotate what the annotation the body annotation do is that it will map the entire message body into this variable called body. Then, what I'm going to do is this: I'm going to use uh, name, which is which is CDI, and I'm and I will map that to string ID. So the body annotation captures the body, and then we mapped it over to st uh, string ID. So if you have used JAXRS, this is very similar to path variable, and also use a uh, path param to map that in. So the next thing I want to do with this, I want to create a list of object which I call result new link list. Okay, and also maybe cast ID and integer called cast ID which is zero and return result like that. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is this: I want to convert uh, the ID into an integer. So I will use cast ID integer pass int id trim okay so just in case someone enters something other than a uh, other than an integer so i'm going to wrap this around 
in a try and catch block. Like that. And what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to return the result. To return the result, basically what you do is you, you just add a, a string in. Like that. So basically what happens is when you return a string back uh, from a method invocation, in this case handle query, uh, what Wopal will do is that Wopal will examine the type and if the type is a string, it will take that string and put it in a body and, and, and send it back uh, to the recipient and forward to the recipient. So in this case, if the message coming in is not an integer, uh, what we do is basically uh, we, we, we get a we get the uh, exception message and then we return we, we return that uh, to the to the user uh, as a uh, as a message so otherwise we will now go customer entity manager and we what, we, what we'll do is we will find we will use uh, JPA to find customer like that okay if we cannot find the customer, then what we're going to do is this. We're going to say result at customer T O M not found, and then we're going to just put the cast ID here. Otherwise, okay, we will add the customer. We want to get the to string, and we also add the customer in so so as you can see if it is a valid customer what we do is we we do two things the first thing is we add the customer to string if you remember uh, this is the to string so the so the to string will appear in the chat text box and also the second add by adding customer since customer is a Jax B object here here is a Jax B object what Vopal will do is this Vopal will convert this into XML and embed it in the message uh, in the uh, in the re in the reply message and then what we do now is we, re we return the result so we clean and we do a clean and build of the um, of our application and now we deploy the application so if you look at glassfish now it's actually going to start deploying the, the application and it has successfully deployed. So if we go back to our admin console for OpenFire and you go to sessions, click on component session, you should see that our um, our external component has connected. So now to test it. So there are so we're gonna use a generic client which in this case is uh, is pigeon. So the first thing I'm gonna do is this I'm going to open up the uh, XMPP console. XMPP console is a is a Pigeon plugin which allows us to view the the message going back and forth between uh, between XMPP uh, between uh, this between the server and the client. So the second thing we want to do is this: we want to create a new instant chat message. Okay. So in this case, who are we going to address to? We are going to address to query. Okay. So if you remember, we're going to do it to query. So query at customer dot bad computer okay so let me just clear this first okay now let me bring up the console so if I type so let's look at one customer ID our database oh sorry here our database so one customer so let's type customer ID one So we type customer ID one. Okay, what you will notice now is this. Uh, this is the to string from customer ID, and if you look at here, this is the to string from the body, and this is the customer ID uh, that that is return in uh, that is return when we embed uh, when we add the customer object into into the return result. So if we type four five six seven. Uh, it will tell me now that this particular customer ID is not f is not found. Okay, so I hope uh, that um, you have uh, I have shown you uh, how you can develop 
applications with uh, uh, XMPP applications with Wopal and do give it a try. Uh, for more information, you can go to one minute distraction uh, dot wordpress dot com. Thank you very much.